Sunday, which means... Let's go! 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 Let
we'll see a couple of our wildebeest out there in that right corner. The wildebeest outside of humans are the largest congregating herd of mammals we'd be able to find. You'd be able to see upwards of 1.5 million of them migrating the savannah grasslands together at any one point in time. They do like to run in a zig and zag type like pattern and they're capable of running up to about 1,000 miles in distance before they need to stop for a rest. They like to follow water sources so they love to chase storms and clouds. The animals in the savannah know that when they need to find water they can follow the wildebeest and they'll lead them directly to it. Out to the left side will be our African painted dogs. Now the African painted dogs will be getting their name thanks to local markets that are all over their coats. They are going to be the most successful hunters in all of Africa with a 90% success rate. Because they work together as a team and they chase their prey until the prey is no longer able to stand. They are also quite the caring pack of animals as they feed their young, sick, and elderly first before anyone else in their pack is allowed to eat. On the hill here to the left will be some sable antelopes, who are in the top 10 largest of the species. What is that? Those horns on their heads can also reach lengths about 4 to 6 feet long, and they're spread down and back to create a great deterrent against any of the predators who may attempt to jump up onto their backs. And the zebras we're going to be seeing here on the reserve are all going to be Hartman Mountain zebras. And they're more known for the thicker, broader, wider stripes that are on their back legs. They have some broader water, wider hind hooves, which will help them to navigate the savannah terrain a bit easier. They're going to be the only zebra species with an extra flap of skin underneath their necks, known as a dewlap flap. And that's going to help out with thermal regulation. My friends, I need everyone to remember, we cannot make any animal noises to those animals. They do not like it, and I do need your volumes to come down. We are being way too loud right now. I know it's exciting, but everyone also still wants to hear as well. And if we're too loud, we can't hear the speakers. Now the zebra, the Hartman Mountain zebras are going to be the only zebra species with this extra flap of skin underneath their necks, which is known as a dewlap flap. And that's going to help out with thermal regulation. And unlike horses who like to be in winning for communication, the zebras prefer to use a series of snorts and chucks. And they're going to throw their body languages into it to really get their point across. To the left here, we'll see one of our Maasai giraffes. Yeah. And Maasai giraffes are more known for the rough, jacket like patterns that are all over their coats. Those patterns of theirs reach from the top of their head down to the bottom of their feet. A giraffe is going to be the tallest animal on land, reaching heights of 18 to 20 feet tall. And they're going to have a great head start on this height as they are born at nearly 6 feet tall, with the 6 foot drop down to the earth as mom does give birth while standing up. A six foot drop is very important for them though as it is what's going to help to get their hearts and lungs going by clearing out all the fluid from inside. Now giraffes do have extremely long prehensile tongues. Prehensile meaning finger-like. Most tongues of theirs can reach lengths of about two to three feet long but will generally average to be about 20 inches which is the rough length of an adult forearm. They're going to be spending a majority of their entire day doing absolutely nothing else but eating and by that I mean they spend about 22 hours every single day just eating but in their defense they do have four stomachs come into elephant country here but take a look to the left on the hill and you'll see one of our mandrels walking around the mandrels are the largest monkey species there are males they can reach up to be about 100 pounds when fully grown they're pretty well known for those blue and red markings on their faces, which will get brighter with the more excitement that they get. They'll have some cheek pockets inside their mouths, which allow them to store an entire day's worth of food inside.
as we do continue forward here and pass through these red clay walls. That's where the Africans like to take those ivory dresses of theirs. They love to dig into the red clay, as you can see all along the wall here on this right side. That allows them to get a hold of minerals and nutrients they aren't able to find anywhere else. They are going to be the largest animals on the reserve, weighing in at about 15,000 pounds, each one fully grown. They have some extremely large ears, which you continue to grow with them as they grow. Their ears do a lot more for them than just allowing them to hear very well. Each of their ears are going to be packed full of blood vessels, and they can flap those ears back and forth to create an ear current that allows them to cool their body temperatures down by about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. They're going to use their long prehensile trunks that will have 40,000 muscles inside to grab a hold of many different things, including sand and dirt and mud. And they take all of that and they throw it up onto their backs as they pass the sand and bug repellents as they do have very sensitive skin. Flamboyants of greater flamingos down here, which are the lightest pink and largest of the flamingo species. When all flamingos are hatched, they are going to start out great. And if we take a good hard look at the island they're on, you may notice it's in the shape of someone's head. Mickey Mouse, as it is one of the three hidden Mickeys here on this reserve. The second one, if you're interested, comes up pretty quickly here. It's a lot harder to spot because it is carved into the backside of a rock on the right. So it's not going to be on the back of the pounds, each one fully grown. Much more social than a black rhino, so they do spend more of their lifetime together in small family groups. And they do, however, have extremely bad eyesight, much worse than mine. And unlike me, they can't exactly wear glasses all day long, so they do have to highly rely on sound and smells to navigate their world. But as we can see, they're not actually white, they're gray in color, so they did get their name from the mistranslation of the Afrikaans word fight, which will mean wide and not white. That's going to be in reference to the wider, broad-shaped mouth they carry, whereas black rhinos have more upper-pointed prehensile lip. But none of the rhinos have any natural predators in the wildlife. Their biggest threat comes from poaching, as they are poached for their horns, believing they have medicinal properties to them. But they're made of nothing other than keratin, just like our hair and fingernails. Up ahead, here to the hill on the left, you'll be able to spot a cheetah roaming around along the back. After that, it's going to take them about 40 minutes to be able to fully touch their breath again. They use their stringy long tails to help them keep their balance and control their direction while running at their top speed. They're going to have some pretty good eyesight thanks to the black tear marks on their faces, which will help to reflect the sun out of their eyes. Now, they're both first feet and not from power, so they will often get chased off by lions and hyenas, African painted dogs, and many other predators who may come out hunting at the same time as them. Their only advantage is that they mostly hunt during the day, while everyone else mostly hunts at night. To the left there, you will see our African lions. They are generally pretty lazy animals, spending about 16 to 20 hours of their day sleeping and lying around. The females come out, they take care of all the hunting while the male, he's going to stay behind. He's going to need to protect the rest of the pride, including all the cubs. If there's currently no cubs within the pride, he'll gladly go out and help with the hunt. But it can be quite difficult for him to hunt with speed and accuracy, as his mane can weigh up to about 40 to 90 pounds when it's fully grown out. They do have extremely great eyesight, very similar to ours during the day. At night, it's going to be by about four to six times brighter. And their roar can be heard up to about six miles away. Trust me, you're going to want to hear this.
she's on the reserve. They're going to be the smaller of the two, weighing in at about 3,000 pounds each one, fully grown. Nigerian dwarf goats like these, they can be found worldwide, but they're going to hail all the way out from West Africa. They're going to be spending most of their day grazing on the grass, taking as many naps as they'd like. They will, however, provide our warden with milk, and we can take their sweet goat milk, which will be rich in protein, and turn it into many other dairy products that can be sold and consumed, helping to protect the wildlife, as it is going to make it much less necessary to need to go out and hunt for any other food sources. It's going to mark our exit out of the reserve at the end of our time. If anyone has that opportunity to come back and visit us again, please do. As those reserves would ever be the same. You never know what animals are going to be out. What they'll be doing our work back to me, even on that time around. I also highly recommend you take the time head through the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. It's going to be a self-guided walking trail. I'll take you about 15 to 20 minutes to go through. You can spend as little or as much time on the trail as you like. It's however about a half mile walking trail, so parents, I do highly recommend you take your strollers for the little ones. Anyone needing wheelchairs, ECB scooters, or anything else with wheels, gotta take all with you as the trail is fully accessible. <laughs> And while you're on that Gorilla Falls Trail, you'll see some similar types of animals that we saw out here this morning, amongst many others, like naked mole rats. They're a family of western lowland gorillas, and there's an underwater viewing area of some of those Nile hippos. Yeah, friends, the good news is for anyone wishing to go through the Gorilla Falls Trail, we're going to be heading back to the exact same dock you got on it. That dock's going to let out right at the entrance of the trail. So if you want to go through your Gorilla Falls, all you have to do is take a left turn at the bottom of the exit ramp. It'll take you right through the entire trail. But no worries. If you don't wish to do Gorilla Falls, just take a turn to the right. It's going to take you right back out to the village and to the rest of the park to continue on with your day.